at all. Um, pretty dehydrated, um, really pretty sick. They weren't sure I would even make it to the U.S. They are taken to Emory University in Atlanta, a different medical universe. One of four high-tech centers in the country designed to handle the most deadly and contagious diseases. People who say that you should not have been allowed back in the country, it's just too dangerous. What do you say to that? I would say that uh, in, in coming back into the country, we understand the uh, concern for public health. Having said that, there have been established procedures and, and protocols that we took very great care in observing. Most important, Nancy is isolated from everyone, even her own husband. It's a really lonely place to be. We put our hands on the glass and you know, I, I told her again, she's the most beautiful woman I know. It's her family and faith that got her through. I think um, one of the scripture, it's a psalm that so many people know, um, that the Lord is my shepherd. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Some Americans say that you have no business being over there. It's too risky. We went to serve, but when you go to serve, you count the cost, but um, you lay it down. You lay down those fears, you lay down what you think might happen. Then, finally, the news that both the Wright Balls and Kent Brantley have been praying for. They are virus free. Today is a miraculous day. I am thrilled to be alive, to be well, and to be reunited with my family. But still ahead, what awaits American troops as they head for the hot zone? The streets. And can they help Ebola's youngest victims? It looks like a war zone. The West Point slum in Monrovia, Liberia. Population over 50,000. By now, the Ebola virus, on the move since December, has killed over 2,000 people in West Africa. And now 3,000 American troops are preparing to deploy there. So this is an epidemic that is not just a threat to regional security, it's a potential threat to global security. If these countries break down, if their economies break down, if people panic. It's already happened. In Monrovia, Liberia, the epicenter of the crisis, West Point became a flashpoint. The panic started in mid-August when the government set up an Ebola holding center there. They quickly filled up with people like Finda. The other adults in her family are dead. So she has six kids with her, and her nephew, Sa, is sick. Why are you laying down? I don't know how to go on oil. I want to go, sir. The energy, and I see the doctor. Her young sister, another nephew, and her own two boys aren't ill. But they all wait with Sa, amid other patients who may have Ebola. You an hour? Oh, not Touch him. Why? Because Her stay here is short-lived. Residents are furious that patients with Ebola are in the neighborhood, so they ransack the center, looting infected medical supplies. Two days later, the government puts the entire community under quarantine. But the rioting and looting continue. Containing a frightened populace isn't easy. In West Point, the quarantine is doomed from the beginning. Well, there where the stream of yeah. is, that's where people cannot go past. That's, so the, that's line. the quarantine line. Yes. And the idea is that the germs will stay on that side of the line. I guess so. Yeah. That's, that's just absurd. Yeah. But when people are scared, they do crazy things. I've never seen a quarantine area like this. They haven't used quarantines like this, where you shut off whole parts of cities since the Dark Ages. Behind the barriers, there's people who can't come and go. They've been in this compound for seven days. Eight days. Why? It's like you're in prison. Yeah. For some, no food, little water, and no power. Meanwhile, Finda and her children are living on the streets. 
afraid her house is infected with Ebola. Three more of her kids are now sick, and they're hungry. But she's also afraid to go to the hospital. So many have died there. So we're turning to the hospital today? I don't know. Do you know the hospital? We'll take you from here. How many children? One, two, three, four, five, six. What's going on? What's going on? Like it or not, like so many others, she is forced to go. But it's too late. Little Saad dies in the hospital. But these photos have surfaced. Even in death, he is known as the little boy on the bucket. When Finda sees those pictures, she breaks down. I think it's going to get better in my head. Because I will get play for my children and Ali. The only baby people that die in my head. They might get in the air so far. They need my hair. Come and be happy. They say I get this out. Anything I live here will go up. Now go up say, that one I will not get it. Now go up give me the one. I say, put it for him. If I say, pray for him for giving them. And they want to have a while. Okay, man. Coming up. He said we can come. A secret ritual. A hidden danger. Is there any way to stop this virus? The answer may surprise you. Ebola inside the deadly outbreak. I never thought I'd be in pursuit of death. We're chasing one of the burial teams that's been put in place to properly dispose of, of people who die from Ebola. But in Monrovia, Liberia, Ebola is spreading uncontrollably. One of the main ways Ebola is spreading in West Africa is through burial practices. The ritual cleaning, the other things that are done around burial. If they can't change that, the feeling is there's no way to control Ebola in West Africa. Officials are on the hunt to find these bodies, test, and burn them before more people get sick. At JFK Hospital, the dead are taken out through the back door. We can come to this side. Yes? We're beckoned in by part of the burial team. He said we can come. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. How many, how many bodies are there? Nine, nine. Nine? Nine. They've already collected nine people who've died from Ebola. How many more? Will there be today? Five more. Five more to be collected. Oh my God. It's the first time here in Liberia that I've really been scared. And this is incredible. You know, seeing a truck cart away 10 bodies of people who, who died from Ebola, it's the gates of hell going into that treatment ward and knowing that the odds are you're going to come out in a body bag. The scenes here in Liberia are grim reminders of what can happen when a virus breaks into the human population. We are all social creatures. Care for our sick. Wash and bury our dead. And that is in the end what makes human beings so vulnerable to Ebola. It's why one of the biggest problems here in Monrovia are burials. Bodies may be covered with viral particles that can infect any who touch them. Funerals are a common source of Ebola's spread. ABC News producer Carrie L. Doe was with a burial team as they attempted to recover a body from a grieving family who doesn't want to part with it. Why do you want to bury the body today? Because the man is a Muslim man. Mm -hmm. So what bury, what bury the body today? Mm -hmm. What do I always say bury? What bury the man today? The reason that people can go out to bury the body in our place, it's not, it's not anything. But what bury, what bury the man today? But what if he does have it? What if he did have Ebola? The man, the man not have Ebola. The bodies are packed up, never to be seen again. This is where they end up. A pile of ashes. Beside the next bodies ready to be burned. Sometimes the bodies are taken before they're even tested. It leads to mass denial that loved ones ever had the disease. Families so desperate to bury their own that we catch a secret one about to take place to avoid the government carting the body away. Where were you all taking the body? The boys were caught by vigilant neighbors, disgusted that they might spread the disease in the neighborhood. An unforgivable crime. That thing is 
very, very terrible. For you sitting in the car without that, it's terrible. They brought all the evil and brought us out. They brought in the community to spread away y'all. Precisely what these body collectors are trying to avoid. We're following this blue truck. It's got the head of the burial team. He got word that in one house in this village, five people died from Ebola. It's a race against time. Every second those bodies linger, the greater the chance of someone else getting infected. The, the community here says that the two people in this house did not die from Ebola, so they're not letting the burial team in. How many how many bodies are in Elwa? Eight there, yes. The burial team is pulling out. They're going to the next hospital where there are many bodies, many people who have died from Ebola. A grim task with no end in sight. No shortage of bodies. When we come back, can the virus come to our shores? It is a fire. It is a fire straight from the pit of hell. We cannot fool ourselves in thinking that the vast moat of the Atlantic Ocean will protect us from the flames of this fire. An impassioned warning from a man who knows Ebola's wrath all too well. American doctor Kent Brantley knows he's lucky. The medicine he took is not a definitive cure for Ebola. Others who were treated with it have died. And as the U.S. puts boots on the ground in West Africa, cases there double every three weeks. An already very weak public health system is near collapse in these countries. Patients are being turned away, and people are literally dying in the streets. And it's a struggle to keep infected patients quarantined. This video captures hospital workers trying to subdue a man who ran away from the Ebola ward. Even one case undetected can wreak havoc. A few weeks ago, a Nigerian diplomat with Ebola slipped out of his quarantine and fled to the global oil hub of Port Harncourt, where hundreds of workers from all over the world live. He was secretly treated by a local doctor in a hotel room. That doctor died of Ebola, but not before treating dozens of patients that could have infected others. Now, more than 200 people are being monitored for the virus, leaving all of Nigeria at risk. This matters big, not just for Americans, for everyone in the world. This is an unprecedented health threat, and if we don't stop it here, we're going to be dealing with it for years around the world. As the world focuses on containing Ebola, there is hope that it can finally be stopped. Scientists are right now racing to develop a cure. The NIH is testing a new vaccine, while Japanese researchers say they've developed a method to detect Ebola in just 30 minutes. And the latest breakthrough, doctors in Nebraska have injected Dr. Rick Sacra with antibodies from his colleague Kent Brantley's blood, and he seems to be responding. The best way to protect the U.S. is to stop the outbreak in West Africa. What can be done to save the lives of people who already have Ebola? We give them the best. You, there are some who are doing well, like I can call you. Roma! 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 Come. There are some who overcome it, like yeah. this guy. How are you, my dear? Hello. Come here, come near here. But How are you? Cross the water here. Yeah. yeah. That's How are you doing? Not You have been here for long. How many days? One week, one day today. One week, one day? Yes. And how do you feel today? I'm okay. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> and when will you go home? I want to go home today. Today? Yes. What do they say? When can you go home? And? When can you go home? When? Now! <laughs> <laughs> and a joyful homecoming for Liberian Dr. Philip Ireland, who contracted Ebola after bravely treating so many in his native country. You've survived Ebola? 